you think of modifying any cell genome? What about a simple cutting and pasting of genes of interest resulting in a collage of many genomes? CRISPR-Cas9 method places us closer to the modification of organisms as we have only imagined so far. For centuries, bacteria have been used in many biotechnological purposes. Their culture and health has been crucial in research, as up to a half of the 100,000 bacteria living in our bodies die every two days. For scientist Philip Hobart, bacterial death was such a huge problem. For this reason, he made research to find out how bacteria protect against viruses attack. However, it wasn't until 1987 when Japanese scientists from Osaka Microbial Diseases Research Institute discovered how bacteria show a particular natural protection against viral infection. Further investigation led to the discovery of various sequences that recognize viral DNA, and when boned, a protein is able to cut it. In 2002, these sequences were called with the not-so-easy-to-remember name of cluster regularly interspaced palindromic repeats, or simply called CRISPR, and those proteins were called CRISPR-associated system, or CAS. In 2005, CRISPR-Cas was finally identified as a kind of microorganism-exclusive immunological system. What will it happen if we introduce necessary components for this mechanism in other cells? In 2012, Emmanuel Charpentier and Jennifer Dabna redesigned necessary RNAs and inserted them together with Cas9 enzyme within cells. This resulted in the discovery of those cells' ability of cutting and editing their own genome. By mid-2012, their finding made history in Nature Journal. These breathtaking results have already harvested many prizes, such as the Asturias Princess Award in 2015 for scientific research and technique. Furthermore, the discovery gives off a slight smell of Nobel Prize. Along the natural history, prokaryotes have been struggling to protect their genetic information from different invasive agents such as bacteriophages. These viruses introduce their DNA and use the cell to replicate and multiply. In response to these invasions, bacteria have developed several defense mechanisms as the CRISPR system. CRISPR is a highly adaptive mechanism in which prokaryotes incorporate small exogenous DNA fragments to its own genome and use it to identify and remove future virus infection fragments. CRISPR-Cas system needs two elements present in bacterial genome, its locus and the Cas operon. The genes encoding for the CRISPR-associated or Cas proteins are all expressed together as an operon called Cas operon, which is found next to the CRISPR locus. Located between the first repeat and the Cas operon, there is a leader sequence that includes the promoter necessary for the transcription of the array. This sequence is essential for the acquisition of new spacers. As the name already indicates, CRISPR locus consists of a group of short, direct palindromic repeats separated by non repetitive sequences termed spacers. Three types of CRISPR Cas systems have been identified depending on the Cas proteins. Type 2 system is the best characterized and most widely used in lab work. Types 1 and 3 are not that interesting as they involve the formation of protein complex. CRISPR-Cas mechanism may be divided in three stages. Acquisition of new spacers, CRRNA biogenesis and interference of exogenous DNA. Spacers are remnants of a previous viral invasion and serve as a form of molecular memory that can be mobilized to ameliorate future attacks. The newest spacers are added to the leader proximal end of a CRISPR array. These new spacers are derived from protospacers. It is important to note that without the leader sequence, it is not possible to incorporate new spacers. A protospacer is a sequence in the foreign genome which always has an associated protospacer motif or PAM motif near it. This short sequence is not incorporated as part of the spacer, but determines what foreign DNA sequences will be incorporated. The transcription of the locus begins from a promoter located within the leader sequence. As operon, the sequence of the CRISPR locus is transcribed in a single long precursor term pre-CRRNA. This pre-CRRNA is further processed by cleavage. For this, it hybridizes with another molecule of RNA called transactivating CRRNA, forming a complex.
Maturation consists in a very first cleavage by RNase 3 producing a set of single separated spacers flanked by repeat derived handles. Further trimming of the 5' end of the spacer is carried out by additional nucleases finishing the sear RNA maturation. This yields a mature dual RNA composed by CR RNA and tray CR RNA. This molecule will be homologued to viral sequences. For the use as a gene editing tool, a transcriptional fusion between CR RNA and tray CR RNA is carried out. The resulting RNA molecule is called single guide RNA and it directs Cas9 nuclease to cleave sequences of interest. In the last stage, Cas9 protein binds the exogenous DNA and cuts both strands with its endonuclease domain. Once cut, there are two possibilities of ligation, non-homologous enjoining that very often introduces delections or insertions, and homologous recombination with the design DNA template. In this way, knockouts and knock-ins are very easy to perform with CRISPR-Cas9 system. To sum up, with CRISPR system, bacteria is able to incorporate small exogenous DNA fragments to its own genome and use them to identify and remove future virus infection fragments. We have taken advantage of this mechanism to create a genetic editing tool with a wide range of applications. All the application of this technique is the study of transcriptional regulation of the genome. By joining an inhibitor or activator to an activated Cas9, we are able to regulate the expression of many genes. By the same mechanism, we can bind effectors such as methylases or acetylases, which will allow us to study the different effects these epigenetic modifications have in DNA. We can also join GFP to an activated Cas9 to obtain in vivo images of the genome thanks to the fluorescence emitted by this protein. With this mechanism, we are able to guide Cas9 proteins with GFP to specific sequences and study the distribution across the cell in vivo. Let's see an example of this. In this video, you can observe the location of different loci of the gene MUC4 from a human cell as fluorescent double dots. It is also possible to appreciate this movement through time. The high accuracy of Cas9 can be used to treat different disorders, either by fixing mutations which cause loss of function, or by removing the ones which are responsible for negative dominant effect disorders. In addition, it is able to introduce protective modifications in the genome to combat complex diseases. For example, in the HIV case, this technique could be used to inactivate CD4 receptors from lymphocytes, preventing the cellular infection with the HIV virus. On the other hand, long-term risks are not yet determined, and this causes the need of an exhaustive study about the possible consequences of this type of therapies.